In episode one, the lines are serviceable, but the actors say them in a really plastic way. The character's social IQ also seems to change from scene to scene, with Justin being the worst offender. I'll just take your number. I'll just take your phone. Huh? One, you give me your phone. Two, I put my number okay, into yeah, it. Okay, yeah, three. yeah, right, right, right. Moving away from the pilot, the dialogue tries to be clever across the entire season, but isn't, and also rhymes during serious moments. People trip me and slam me into walls, lock me in the bathroom stalls. There are also numerous scenes that are overwritten. Tony's a dick. He's not a dick. He's a dick, he's a prick, and he's a cuck. Okay, those are the same things. No, they're, they're nuances of meaning. In terms of story, I think it's pretty repetitive because the narrative structure itself makes it repetitive. We are listening to the tapes of people who wronged the dead girl, Hannah, so we know at some point something is going to go wrong and they won't be friends anymore. One might say, it's about the journey, not the destination. But the writing isn't good enough for me to enjoy the journey knowing the end point. And because of the way it's told, the program spoils itself multiple times. We see the picture of Hannah and Courtney kissing beforehand, so the entire lead up is boring and I was just waiting for them to kiss so we can move on. Jeff's death is spoiled as well, since I and I think everyone else knew he had died before Clay found him. Jeff was also one of the only purely likable characters on the show and should have gotten way more screen time. At one point we get shots of Justin and Jesse kissing to make it seem like Justin may have raped her while she was drunk. Then the big reveal is Justin only stepped out of the way to allow her to be raped. He does come to his senses and try to stop Bryce, but even after hearing his explanation, I still think him letting Bryce in there is insanely cruel. It'd be much more understandable if Justin got distracted while drunk, then left her alone in there and Bryce snuck in. One thing I will give the show credit for is being the only thing besides Synecdoche, New York to make me feel truly hopeless. But it's supposed to be an anti-suicide show, so that's probably actually a bad thing. But, but, I do see how people like this season, however I do not, because of the writing and most of the characters. I appreciate the show's attempt to make complicated characters, but they all need more likability pumped in. And while I feel bad for Hannah, and I like her and Clay's interactions, I don't like Hannah herself. I can understand her attitude on the tapes, but she wasn't exactly always fun to be around before the bad shit happened. I keep thinking you're some different kind of male. Clearly there's no such thing. Clay was trying to be supportive here, so her shitting on him and men in general is pretty annoying. And her leaving Clay a tape to say, plot twist, you were a good thing in my life, but you didn't chase after me after I told you to leave, so now I'm dead, is super fucked up. And of course, Clay blames himself for her being impossible. Not only does he have to hear about her excursions with other dudes, but he spends most of the season in a state of overwhelming anxiety, wondering what he'd done when he didn't do anything. At the critical moment, he did exactly what he should have done. In fact, Clay stayed and tried to talk to her way longer than I would have. She does this come chase me shit again with therapist man, and you can't push people away and expect them to chase you. That's extremely unhealthy. And during that same scene, she seems more concerned with recording the tape than actually getting help. The guidance counselor, Mr. Porter, also talks to her in a very coarse and almost accusatory way, and I get that they are trying to prove a point about it being tough for people to come forward about sex stuff, but he acts differently in that conversation than he acted all season, and he shouldn't have to make a character act out of character to prove a point. If he's going to be that guy, then have him be that rude, coarse guy all season. The show also stretches out Clay and Hannah's friends, more than friends relationship to the point where it's really annoying. It also succeeds in spoiling itself once again by showing its bits and pieces of Clay and Hannah kissing, removing all the tension of will they, won't they, because we know they will. At the end of the season, Alex's suicide attempt is treated like a bad day at school. We get the news that he shot himself, then it cuts to Clay who seemingly moved on five seconds after passing on the tapes, and then the season abruptly ends with no sense of finality to it, like they ran out of money or something. A few footnotes before we move on, this zoom is bizarre. It's like when I zoom in on shit to be whimsical, but it's the actual show, and it reminds me of Stuckman's short film. I get what they are going for, Bryce raped Jessica and now they're in the same vehicle, tense, oh oh, but the zoom makes it unintentionally funny. I also gotta call shenanigans on the program here. For context, they are discussing a hot list where Hannah won best ass. What if girls made a list and you got Worst biceps. I mean, more girls would probably never do that list. Precisely. Girls at my school 100% made that list. I remember because I got four tally marks out of five, and this girl walked by the board and erased one because she didn't like me. I'm not mad. Multiple characters mention Hannah being beautiful, and it's such a tragedy that she passed. It makes me wonder what would happen if an ugly guy died. Would the tapes just be thrown away? It's real depressing to think about. Anyway, let's move on to the next installment. Yeah. Season 2 feels like unneeded DLC for Season 1. The good moments from Part 2 could have easily been rolled into Part 1, and the trial could have taken place without all these new stories that make the tapes make little to no sense. 
Zach having a tape that focuses on the note that happened before their relationship doesn't make sense since she clearly forgave him for that. I'm cool with her keeping the relationship a secret, but Zach should have just not had a tape. Justin having a tape despite the fact that he apologized to her repeatedly and they kept texting doesn't make much sense either. There's also some weird shit going on with Justin in general. He makes these comments like, Hey Alex, when people saw your hair, they said you were a loser. But not me, bro. I'm a good guy. I think as a character, he's the best testament to the bad writing because they give him a tragic backstory, lots of regret, is trying to be better, and I still don't like him. Probably because the show is overtly telling me over and over again that I should like him, which is a bummer, because if I did like him, the rescue mission and him returning to school would be pretty badass moments. The season heavily foreshadows a school shooting, but the actual confrontation lasts about five minutes and has no consequences. It would have been great if Clay would have talked to Tyler, Tyler was not going to do it, then Tony's car coming up spooked him and he fired the gun. In the real show, Clay stands there holding a machine gun with the police rapidly approaching, and it made me want to yell at the TV. Speaking of Clay, he no longer feels like the main character in his own show, and the program sets up the straw man of Hannah's a slut, then knocks it down. Hannah's definitely not a slut, but her having continuous sex with Zach does make her and Clay's almost relationship seem less important in hindsight. This season also contains my second favorite piece of dialogue from the whole show, with Hannah accusing Alex of trying to have sex with his own girlfriend. Are you like trying to have sex with her now or something? What? No. This comes during a conversation where she is openly jealous of Alex and Jessica's relationship, even though she never made a move to try to get with Alex like she did with Justin. Alex responds appropriately, telling Jessica that she's jealous, and then later says he shouldn't have said that, but he was completely right. She was jealous and a little bit obsessive. I appreciate that the show acknowledges that Hannah wasn't perfect, and I've already said this once, but it's really annoying to see people blame themselves for her being emotionally unstable because she's dead. And now I'd like to play you my favorite line from season two. Are they the best influence for you right now? What, why, because they're black? Is that a serious question? If you have to get a character to say something really stupid to get another character to react to it, it's still really stupid. This season also tells us that Hannah, with tears in her eyes, told Clay that she might want to die, and even coming off Molly, I don't think Clay would have let that go. And I'm not sure why the series is trying to put more blame on him. Maybe they realized he did nothing wrong in season one and wanted to justify him feeling so guilty. I don't know. It should also be said that the overwhelming darkness is gone. So my favorite thing about the series no longer exists. But the scene where everyone dances with Clay does warm my cold heart. Let's discuss season three. I'm going to start off by just recapping the plot of the season. Bryce Walker, serial rapist, has been murdered and the gang has to find out who done it. Jessica starts redating Justin because he makes her feel safe. He let his best friend rape you and then he lied to you about it. How the fuck does that feel safe? Clay's new crush, Ani, who isn't annoying at all, chooses Bryce over him. She's also afraid of Clay at one point, then they start dating at the end of the season. Montgomery has sex with a man and beats him up because he's struggling with his sexuality. I think we've all been there. They see each other again and the guy's initially afraid of him, but then fucks him and defends him after the good guys frame him for murder. They also take turns supervising an attempted school shooter. That's not a made up plot, that's all true, and I am once again suing Netflix. I understand people have toxic romantic and non-romantic relationships, but everything I listed is so insane that you can't take it seriously. The program makes an honest attempt to humanize Bryce Walker, self-described serial rapist, while also trying to be a 2019 post Me Too show. So you go from scenes where Bryce is being a fun teddy bear to show serial rapists are people too, hashtag not all rapists, to scenes where Jessica is trying to ban male sports from the school because in her opinion, male sports equals rape, and she's doing this while dating a male sportsman who let her get raped. I love how these activist types never push for additional sex ed classes or reading materials about consent. It's always the most extreme option like protesting at funeral. Hey! Get that sign down! Another thing I enjoy is this, I guess, stand in for a feminist Twitter user telling Jessica, a rape victim, that she's not handling her sexual assault the right way. She also yells at Tyler for disagreeing with her because apparently any level of disagreement means you're not a real ally, even though Tyler got Johnson in the bathroom. But she apologizes later and he gets a nice photo of her, so it's all good. Ha ha, XD. Despite Jessica's own words, I don't want to be just a sexual assault victim, that is her entire character at this point. As far as the success of the attempt to redeem Bryce, if it's against her will, then that's the thrill. Walker, it doesn't work. When you're doing a storyline that has never been done before, you should stop at some point and ponder why it's never been done before. And sometimes the person is just too far gone. Most of the time, Bryce is still a cocky asshole with a few moments of vulnerability or clarity here or there, but it's nowhere near enough. 
If he had simply cheated on a bunch of girls or been a shitty person, then yeah, the arc probably could have worked. He could probably even still be the reason Hannah killed herself and found some path of redemption. But he went out of his way to injure Zack this season, and his final moments were spent talking about how he was going to get him back. I think a fitting end for Bryce would be he goes to Hillcrest thinking he's going to run shit, then he gets there and everyone bullies him, and the last we see of him is just a shot of him at a table alone because that's what he deserves. His three month jail sentence is completely fucked. The season one issue returns of characters being smart one second and dumb the next. Justin casually uses the word transitively, and Monty notices that Justin has shaving cream, but uses an electric razor, so he must be doing something bad, even though Monty normally has a sub-negative 1000 IQ. He has a pretty good post-gay sex quote though. I'm not fucking gay. In closing, season 3 is horrible, bizarre, objectively not good, and if season 4 is this bad, I might kill myself. <laughs> In season 4, Jessica cements herself as one of the most unlikable characters ever by telling a group of men what it is to be a man. She refuses to get patted down after setting off a metal detector and is still allowed in. Then the principal praises her for being stunning and brave and apologizes to her. She openly admits to manipulating Diego, even though Diego is, like most of the characters, an unlikable asshole himself, so I'm not that mad about it. The season also does a mini redo of the Bryce storyline and tells us that Monty was a good person deep down. He simply let his anger get the best of him when he molested someone in the bathroom. And I think Bojack addressed his talking point pretty well. I don't think I believe in deep down. I kind of think all you are is just the things that you do. They also redo the school shooting thing, and I've never been so blue balled in my life. They had a tense situation with good music, characters thinking they were going to die, a horrific atmosphere. Then it turns out it's a drill, and we've been pump baked yet again. If a school pulled this in real life, there would be so much backlash, and it would have been more realistic if there had been a shooting. Clay's reaction is exactly how I feel watching this shit. No! 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 Winston manages to kill any sympathy I had for him by using what Zack told him when he was scared for his life to continue his quote-unquote investigation, and I love how he drops the whole thing because he and Alex dated for a week. I mean, Alex is cute, but he's not that cute. I do hate that he ended up with Charlie William Bartholomew Carnegie II since he has the personality of a wet towel. However, let's go back to Zach. My man had a decent relationship with Hannah, star athlete, helped Alex with his rehabilitation in more ways than one, helped Clay bring down Bryce and get laid, and and brought a hooker to a social engagement. I'm gonna go dance with a whore. Friendship ended with Big Papa Kavinsky, Zach is new Netflix best friend. The season starts off on an intriguing note with someone's funeral, but I lost all interest when I found out it was Justin, dying from AIDS. If you haven't watched the show, you might think I'm joking, but he actually dies from full-blown AIDS. Then Ghost Bryce appears to tell Jessica she might be positive as well. You probably have it too. One of the big reveals of this season is that Clay has been dissociating, but then he hangs out with his friends from earlier seasons, then apparently it's fine. I didn't realize how much I miss Ryan Shaver until he reappeared, but I think it's mostly because the characters that have been introduced since then have been so horrible. It really is a trip to look back at season 1, which I still don't think was very well made, but it did have a whiff of magic to it, or at least some scenes that stuck with me. Then look at parts of seasons 3 and 4, and it makes me sad because I feel like there was a lot of wasted potential. I also wish the series would have tackled more issues, like eating disorders, and actually discouraged toxic relationships, instead of going down the predictable men are bad, okay, rabbit hole. Oh, and fuck the patriarchy. <laughs> As far as the internet's relationship with mental health, I feel like most people just bring it up when they want to make excuses or try to act like their mistakes aren't their fault, and when someone does need help, they don't get it. Our leaders certainly don't care and have said so on the record. And so the younger generation now tells me how tough things are. Give me a break. No, no. I have no empathy for it. Give me a break. If you want a better show that deals in mental health, you should watch the aforementioned BoJack Horseman. I'm gonna go play Doom. I think my next video will be a Last of Us 2 playthrough or a video on Game Grumps. I'm not really sure, but either way, I'll see you then. Later. Yeah, that Ryan's a fucking tool. Worst kind of gay. I mean, I didn't mean that because he's gay. Oh, I did.